This is the MSI RX 5700 XT Evoque, and this will probably be the shortest video you see on the card. Let's get started. My intention with the Evoque is pretty straightforward. I don't expect it to be some Miracle 5700 XT. These are all the exact same GPUs and the same memory. But I also don't expect it to be a bad 5700 XT, and that's more or less what we're investigating today. Physically, I think MSI did an all right job with this thing. The shroud design is interesting and uh, yeah, gold. It'll likely pop in any build. The PCB is significantly smaller than the shroud, which encases it like a clam, but I'm content with the minimalist design apart from the color. I'm just not big on the gold factor here. Video ports are pretty routine. Three display ports. I'm actually gonna double check that. Yep, three display ports, one HDMI, no DVI. That's pretty much gone at this point. I know many of you still use it, but the newer cards are phasing it out. This is a two-fan card, by the way, compared to the three-fan design found in the Power Color Red Devil we reviewed a bit earlier. You can check that video out right here. And we'll see how that affects noise and temps, because as you decrease the number of fans and shrink the cooler, temperatures tend to rise. That or the card runs significantly louder because the fans have to turn faster to displace the same amount of air and get rid of all of that heat. Our test bench is the same as it's always been for the past four or so graphics card reviews, so I won't spend too much time here. And you can find these components along with the cards tested in this video in the description below. Starting first with power draw, yeah, nothing too surprising here. The Evoke isn't as power hungry as the Red Devil, but we still see a noticeable bump from stock along uh, with about 50 megahertz or so core boost out of the box. This will vary slightly from card to card, but we were seeing about a 50 megahertz boost. This is an 8 plus 6 pin config, same as the reference card, so ignore the fact that I've jimmied two 8 pins into this thing. It's just easier for me to deal with two and kind of make do with the changes from card to card instead of swapping power supplies and cables. And to be completely honest, I think temperatures for the Evoke are just fine. Sure, it runs a tad hotter than the Red Devil under an intense load. I mean, one to two degrees Celsius, arguably within the margin of error, but it's no reference card, that's for sure, and it's a good thing. 75 degrees Celsius, just fine in my book, and you'd likely have a bit of thermal overclocking headroom to play with, assuming you wanted to overclock this card, Although, overclocking graphics cards in general, I'll go off on a small tangent here just in case you're wondering, you can skip it if you want. Overclocking graphics cards, in my opinion, just isn't worth it in 2019. These cards will kind of clock themselves according to the thermal headroom that they have, the power headroom that they have, uh, so there's really no need to manually overclock unless you really want to squeeze out every inch of performance that you can get in your card. Most of the time, though, you're gonna run a lot hotter with that overclock, and as a result, your card will likely run louder as well, and you're only gonna see typically around a 5% boost, if that, in overall frame rates. And, and if you're already gaming at a frame rate above 100 FPS, five or so FPS here and there, it's gonna go largely unnoticed. But there is one issue I'm having with this card, and I'm sure the thumbnail gave it away. It's sound. The MSI RX 5700 XT Evoque uses two fans, remember, and a cooler that is dwarfed by PowerColor's Red Devil model with similar frequencies. This means that in order to retain competitive temperatures, MSI had to ramp up the fan curve. A lot. And it's disappointing because it's now suddenly as loud as the 5700 non-XT reference card, and that was a pretty loud card. Not as loud as the XT model, but Still. By the way, recall how the decibel system works when you look at this graph. The human ear responds to sound logarithmically, so I see, well, it's roughly logarithmically. We use that scale because it's pretty close to real life. So a scale was developed around this perception to graphically illustrate how loud things seem to us. The Evoke is three and a half decibels or thereabouts higher than the Red Devil under load, which roughly translates to a 25, actually it's about 27% bump in perceived loudness. So you could say that the Evoke is around 27% louder under load, despite what you might think this graph is telling you. And 27% is actually a pretty big deal in my book. It's definitely noticeable. The card was definitely louder than the Power Color card. And that's a shame because that's really this thing's only Achilles heel. I think it's priced pretty competitively if you ignore the, the loudness part. Uh, again, the design, you're either going to love it or hate it. The color, you're going to love or hate. But uh, all in all, it's a solid AIB. But anyway, that's a real shame. So if you do end up buying this card, adjust the fan curve to run a hotter card. Luckily, you've got some breathing room there. Or just wear headphones. 
either will do. That's really about it. I mean, that's all you can really do. Oh, and, and make sure that you don't throw this card into a case with terrible airflow properties for obvious, obvious reasons. As for gaming, it's pretty straightforward. I'm not gonna spend much time on that. I mean, this at this point, you guys know what 5700 XT performance looks like. I'll show you the graphs briefly, but I'm not gonna talk through them like I usually do. There are no anomalies here with respect to the different SKUs. All in, the 5700 XT, in my opinion, is a viable substitute for the RTX 2070 and the titles tested. This will vary, of course, from game to game. And uh, the same goes for a few instances where the 2070 Super actually trades blows with the 5700 XT as well. So that's pretty cool. And, and it's the 2070 Super costs more. So my recommendation is either the non-Super counterpart, assuming you can find that for around $400, that's 400 USD, good luck with that, uh, or finding one of the AIB XT variants for a similar price is always a good bet. My verdict then is that the MSI Evoke model that we have here is better than reference, but that's not saying much. It's certainly not the best for the price, and I'll be blunt about that. I mean, for around 430 bucks where we expect this to fall, I think the Red Devil is a better card. It offers a quieter and cooler experience, and that's why I'd recommend that one over this Evoke here, just being blunt. And that said, like, I'd still take the Evoke over reference, right? And so it really depends on the market, inventory levels. If you can't find the power color card where you live, then maybe this is the only option, but I'd still definitely recommend this over reference. Again, not really saying much, but it's still a better card. And by the way, we'll be featuring this card in our up and coming all AMD build sponsored by MSI. This video was not, they just sent the parts for this. I figured I'd give you guys a review of this card before we actually used it in the build. But uh, anyway, stay tuned for that. And if you're interested in this card or anything else shown in this video, again, links as always are down in the video description. If you like this video, you can click that thumbs up button, consider subscribing if you haven't already, I appreciate that. And I'll catch you in the next one. Told you this one would be short. This is Science Studio, thanks for learning with us.